We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Processional hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people of the Lord of God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have 
مسیح است. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace. And in all our weaknesses, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, verses 26 and verses 13 to 12 to 13. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, the rich one and, a poor, and the other poor. The rich man have, every, have very many flocks and herbs, but the poor man had nothing but one little elam which he had brought. He brought it up and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of the meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in the bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flocks or herb to prepare for a wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for a guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who have done this deserve to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man, thus said the Lord, the God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wife into your bosom and you, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah and if that has been too little, I would have added, added as much more. Why have you displeased the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and had killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus said the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your, neighbors, to your neighbor and he shall lie with your wife in the sight of this very son. For you, for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. 
David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Psalms, we say it alternatively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, and in your great compassion blot out my offenses. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patient bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the, to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and God and the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And each of us will give grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on the high, he made captivity itself a captive, he gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean that, but that he has also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended in is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gift he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to the maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown away I'm blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitfulness scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way with him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped. As each part is working properly, promote the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gradual. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. After this, Jesus went through the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A light crowd kept following him because they saw the sign that he was doing for the sick. I'm sorry for the the wrong gospel. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are not looking for me, or you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food 
that perishes, but for the fool that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life into the world. They said to him, Say, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The people of God, the gospel of Christ. speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Dear people of God, I don't think I have any excuse to offer for reading the wrong lesson, but to apologize. Because I was reading it even when I was sitting over there. So it's my fault. Uh, today we continue with David and Bathsheba. And uh, any time we read this particular story, we all have our own judgments. We all have our own judgment. Some blame Bathsheba for having a bath on the rooftop. Some say this, some say that. I mean, many, many, many things. And so yesterday, in fact, I decided to search again. Why this story in the Bible? If we call this the holy book, 
Why this story? Not even in the Old Testament, but right here in the New Testament. And uh, my research drew my attention to human frailty. To human frailty. We are human as David was. And David, before he was made a king, it is in the Old Testament that God said, I will set somebody for you as a king, a person of my own heart. So David was very close to God, very close to God. And theologians say, David is a king, a priest, and a prophet. But why? We see the actions of David still on this earth. This happened thousands of years ago. And it happens to you and me. When you have power, be careful. When you have power, especially me standing here, I'm your priest. So whatever I say, you people believe it. That's the power I have. Oh, he's a man of God. So whatever he says, that is it. And we have our kings, we have our politicians. Somebody says, when do politicians lie? They say, when they open their mouth. <laughs> David was a king. Now he's a king over Judah and Israel. The two kingdoms have been united. And it's been handed everything belong to his predecessor. Everything. But David's power, David saw himself as Lord of the law. His power was unchecked. Impunity, arrogance, greed, avariciousness, corruption. These sins have not left the world. They are still with us. They are so with your priests, they are with you, the people. They are with our prime minister, they are with our president, they are with our parliamentarians, MPPs, and all. These are human frailties. These are human frailties. And when Nathan went to David, we were all expecting Nathan to lash at David. But he didn't do that. He did it diplomatically. Told him a story. Oh, there was a poor man who had only one sheep, the lamb. And the lamb goes everywhere with him. As I learned in my reading, Mary had a little lamb. So that lamb followed this poor man. Then the rich man had a guest. He had all this flock of sheep, all this whatever he couldn't. And yet he went for the only one that belonged to that poor man and killed him for his guest. David said, what? Who did this? May he be punished. Blah, 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 blah. But David was angry. Then Nathan said, Oh, you are the very person. You are the very person. So David was lost. Wow. And out of his mind says, 
he would have found it four times. Four times. But according to his law, if somebody sees a gold from you, you have to pay three times. But now David has stolen somebody's lamb, somebody's wife, and is going to pay four times over and above. But dear people of God, we judge. We are people who judge. I judge, you judge. Sometimes we don't even listen to the other side and we judge. But when Nathan told David his story and David saw that it was him himself, David confessed and asked for part forgiveness of sins. And I'm told that was David. He saw what he had done. That it was wrong. And so he confessed his faults. And the Lord forgives all kinds of sins if you confess sincerely. If you confess sincerely, the Lord forgives. No sin is so big that the Lord cannot forgive. It depends on how how we see ourselves in the sin, how we did it, and do we ask for forgiveness? It's the work of God to forgive. It's the work of God to forgive. And he forgives. And God chooses all kinds of people for his work. Chooses all kinds of people. Who ever knew that this mighty Elijah would run away from Jezebel? They are people of God. Let us put in mind that God is ready to forgive us all our sins. If only we sincerely come to him and say, Lord, forgive. The Psalms that we read, I was conceived in sin. And this Psalm is read every Sunday or every day in Lent, in the morning prayer, Psalm 51. Thou shalt wash men, I shall be clean. Thou shalt purge men, I shall be whiter than snow. And uh, our friend Paul in the Ephesians, Paul always traveled to many, many, many countries. And in those countries, those days at Paul, they were metropolis. They were different kinds of people in the Christian community. And he always sought to bring unity. Let's all come together and unite. In Ephesians, Paul talks about unity, which is not created on similarities. But unity that is based on the love of God. Diversity of gifts and yet unity. We grows in the love or from the love of God. And so Paul uses the Greek word koinonia. Fellowship. When there is fellowship, then there is unity. Because God didn't give them all one gift. Some he made apostles. Some made prophets. 
Some were to be preachers, some teachers. Some were seers, they could see and say things. But all those gifts, all those gifts were to come together for the work of God. So those who were teachers, they were to teach the word of God. They were to teach what comes from God and not what comes from themselves. The prophets were to tell the truth, the way that God has given them. Just as Jeremiah did when he went to the middle of the earth and said, look, this is what the Lord God is saying. If you don't turn and repent, you will go to exile. And people wanted to kill me. Say, well, you can't kill me. But remember that the blood will be on you. Because I'm speaking the truth. And this is what God gave me. He never relented. Jeremiah spoke the truth. Because the Lord God gave him his way. Now, Paul talks about unity in the ancient church. And we continue to talk about unity in this present church. Uh, we talk about the Reformation. Yes. Day in and day out, there's another church who claims to be the church of God. Day in and day out. Sometimes when I go back home, go back home to my country, Ghana, I'm amazed at the number of churches. Somebody says, we have all these churches, but no improvement in our economy. You have a six classroom block, and in every classroom there's a church, a different church. Where are the gifts of God? Sometimes I ask myself, do we really believe in God? Do we really believe in the gospels that people preach day in and day out? Somebody has a gift, but he will not stay in his church, goes out, and then another church. Then somebody also goes from that church to another church. They are people of God. God gave us all these gifts so as to come together and help one another. I always use myself that short people are supposed to help the taller ones. Why? I have very tall friends. Some are six something, some are almost seven foot. But they can't bend that and go under their bed to bring what they have under their bed. I'm the only one who can bend and go under their bed to bring what is there for them. And so sometimes I laugh at them. You see you are tall, but you can't bend and go under your bed. <laughs> we are born so that we should help one another. That is a community of Kononea. Christian fellowship. The rich should help the poor. And the poor should help the rich. Not in slavery. No. Not in slavery. So we are all to help one another. If you could see things, yes. But see it and say it appropriately. Don't use your humanness to say things that has not been given to you. And the gifts are supposed to help us to do the work of God. Love, compassion, forgiveness. That is the work of God. Sympathy. That's the work of God. Not lording it over one another. That is not the work of God. 
We see it in the church, lording it over one another. I am your priest. That is it. Don't say anything when we go to synod. But one man, one man cannot carry Christ. One man cannot worship God alone. He's too big. God is too big to be worshipped by one person. That's why he made us. We are his and we are the sheep of his pasture. He created us. Let's look into our own family. Each and every one has something in the family that we don't want to talk about in public. The behavior of some of our own brothers and sisters. If we start now, we open can of worms. Everybody here will say something about one of his brothers or one of his sisters. And yet, we are born from one family, one blood, and we are all Christians, and yet we are divided. We say about politics, but church politics is deadlier than what we have here between the conservatives and the liberal or those south of the border. Sometimes we laugh at them when we read the news about south, south of the border. But it's happening here also. You see, the gifts, the gifts, the gifts, everybody has, we all have. But because we don't know what we have, we misuse them. If we know the gifts that we have, we will not misuse them. And uh, I want to appeal to you, going on to John, Gospel, I want you all to read John says from one to the end the question there is who is Jesus Christ who is Jesus Christ to individuals so I want to suspend this until you have all read that, and then Sunday when we come, we we'll do congregational preaching. Each and every one will tell us who Jesus Christ is. In John's Gospel, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats the bread will never be hungry. And what about it me? We'll never be thirsty. You remember the woman at the well when Jesus was asking for water? So, so this is the well of our father. How do I give you drink? You, a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Even you don't have a cup even to drink from. And Jesus said, anybody who drinks this water will be hungry again. But I can give you water that when you drink, you'll never be thirsty. No one says, oh, then give me this water. Ah. And she went to town and told the people. So please, let us read John 6. Then we'll talk about what Jesus is saying about himself. This is the testimony of Jesus to the people. I'm the bread of life. That Jesus himself testifying. So in your life, in your life, what is Jesus Christ to you? He may be something to you. 
In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I hope I'll see you all next week. Please stand. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to get the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise of the people. Let us pray. Let us pray for the needs of the world God so loves, saying, We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. Attentive God, we lift our voice to you. Drawn by your steadfast love and confident in your great power to redeem, we pray for the church, for those in need, and all your creation. Let us pray, saying, We wait pray for, for you, Lord. Lord. In, In your, your word, word we hope. hope. Bless your church to extend mercy to the outcast, kindness to the stranger, and forgiveness to the erring. In the Anglican Church in Canada, and we pray for the Right Reverend Helen Kennedy, Bishop, and for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Quapel. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, and the congregations of the Northern Area of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Kenya, for its laity, deacons, priests, and bishops. Let us pray, saying, We, we wait, wait for, for you, Lord, Lord in, in your, your word, word we mm. hope. Redeem your creation from the wilderness of sin and death to the flourishing of righteousness and life. Let us pray, saying, We pray wait for you, you Lord. In, in your, your word, we hope. hope. Restore justice with mercy and truth with trust in our nations and neighborhoods. We remember and pray especially at this time for the people and nation of Jamaica as they commemorate 62 years of independent rule on Tuesday of this week. Let us pray saying, We, we wait, wait for, for you, Lord. Lord. In, In your, your word, word, we hope. Raise up those who cry from the depths of poverty, oppression, violence, and despair. 
We lift up before you our friends and clients of the Saints Cafe. As we pray for this ministry in its outreach to the poor, hungry, and homeless within our community. We pray for our coordinator, volunteers, and all who give generously of themselves to support this work week by week. We pray for all who receive meals, support, and Christian friendship through this program. Grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do and in the lives of all whom we are so privileged to serve. Let us pray, saying, We wait, wait for, for you, Lord. Lord. In, in your word, we hope. Regenerate and renew those who visit us week by week. We pray for those now gathered in person or virtually for worship. Meet them even now in their area of need. Continue to draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Grant that our worship and our gathering may be so transformed by your risen life that all who visit with us may truly encounter you. Let us pray, saying, We wait, we wait for, for you, Lord. Lord. In, In your, your word, word, we hope. Sustain and comfort those who bear illness in body, mind, or spirit. We pray in a special way for the following members of our congregation and their caregivers. Carol. Thelma, Maureen, Joe, George, Marjorie, Clifton, Pauline, Kathleen, Reuben, Nellie, Andrew, Carmen, Felicia, Ian, Pat, Paul, Ethel, Doreen, Divine, Rima, Hyacinth, Angela, Erica, Rita, and Dorothy. We pray for those for whom members of this gathered community have asked our prayers, especially Benedict Atu, Ida and Ken Bahadur, Glenda Bostic, Thelma Chastio, Danielle Christie, Gary Duncan, Angela Eady, Jason Falbo, Evelyn Greenwich, Portia, Lansdale Dye, Ruthlyn Holt, Ngozi Atu, Iyabo Ogunduran, Eric and family, Gregory Linton, Patrick, Vaughn Martin, Heather Maynard, Joseph Murray, Reverend Mark Regis, Cindy, Telsey Kellerman, Leopold Austin Jr., Joy Agard Mighty, Patricia Adams, Angela Pupolo, Elizabeth Patton, Eva Manifold and Germaine, Cora Swabi, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Mariel, Marianne and Valerie Walters, Shanice Ashmead, Florence Umugmai, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Atina, Latoya and for Ovando. We intercede for those now on our hearts and minds. Let us pray, saying, We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. 
Help us to put away bitterness and wrath, anger, jealousy, and slander, and to be kind to one another, living in love as you have loved us. Let us pray, say, we wait, we wait for, for you, Lord. Lord. In, In your, your word, we hope. Let your love embrace those we remember and name now either silently or aloud. Let us pray, saying, We wait Go for you, Lord. Lord. In, In your, your word, we hope. hope. Thank you for our ancestors who ate your living bread and now live forever. Let us pray, saying, We wait for you, Lord. In your word, we hope. Nourishing God, to you we commit our prayers through Christ, the true and living bread of life. Amen. Amen. Let us also pray for those on vacation from this church. Pray for those who have been captured in the wars around the world, especially the children and the women. Let's pray for their survival. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in your goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we do. that you know God of all creation through your goodness we have the bread to our Father the human has a need to become the bread of salvation Amen. blessed are you Lord God of all creation through your goodness we have this wine to offer the fruit of the vine that become a cup of salvation
offertory. Sustainer, a supper we offer you this day, and feed us continually with that bread which satisfy all hunger, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Savior. Therefore we praise you joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave you disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us, your son, in his sacrifice, that we made us suitable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. People of all ages and nations, who are baptized into Christ are invited and encouraged to share in their communion. If you are not receiving the bread and wine, you'll be pleased if you will join us at the Lord's table for a blessing. Communion hymn.
spread for birthdays, anniversaries, and other occasions. Is there any? Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for all who are celebrating their birthdays, for those who are above 100 years. We pray for the request of all others for travel messes. You know our needs, O oh Lord, before we ask. We humbly ask you, Lord, to fulfill the petitions we send you. But may your will be done. Bless us, O oh Lord, and bless our brother and sister who are here, their families, and all who are celebrating their birthdays, and all who enjoy with them. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Prayer after communion. Can we all stand if possible? God of grace, we have shared in the mystery of the body and blood of Christ. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you this day and always. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Afternoon. It's morning still. <laughs> Threw me off. I hope you guys are all doing well and having a wonderful Sunday so far. Um, so, just a few announcements to draw to your attention. First and foremost, as always, thank you to Ken and Abba for joining us today. He will be with us next Sunday as well. So, hopefully, everyone took note of the homework so that we're ready for next week Sunday. All right? Thanks. So just a few announcements to draw to your attention uh, this week. Um, so while Father Theodore is away, there will be no morning prayer. So for those of you who usually join in for morning prayer, you can log into St. Paul's. They begin at 7.30 a.m. So you have a, a few minutes um, from our regular start time. So it starts at 7.30 a.m. Tuesday's uh, Bible study continues at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And um, Bible study on Thursdays is on a summer break, so we will resume in September. Same thing with Sunday school, it's on a summer break and will resume in September. There are a few seats left for two. Ooh, we're down to a couple. So um, last chance, there are two seats left for the bus trip. For anyone who is interested in joining us to see Daniel, please speak with Sister Connie. Um, at the back there. So there are a couple of seats uh, left for that. And while we're on the 70th anniversary activities, we have the Evening of Elegance that is happening on October 19th, which is a Saturday. Tickets are available at 125 each um, for adults. So if you are interested, hope, I think everyone is interested, um, please get 
a ticket, you can speak with either myself or Iris or Fenella when um, she is here. Mm. Saints Cafe is closed tomorrow and will resume regular hours on Wednesday. And I think that is it for the announcement. So to end it for this week, we are going to um, wish everyone who is celebrating a birthday this week um, a happy birthday. So celebrating on the 7th, we have Pierre McDowell and Dorothy Maskell. Celebrating on August 8th, we have Kendra Austin, Tatiana Edwards, and Hannah Ogabor. On August 9th, we have Sharice Henriquez, Garfield Thompson, and, and on August 10th, Kay Austin is celebrating their birthday. So we wish everyone who is celebrating a birthday this week a very, very happy birthday. And before I wrap up, I think, Sister Connie, you have something to add? Thank you. And also, please don't run off. There is some light refreshments downstairs in the parish hall as well. Um, so please join us downstairs in the parish hall for some light refreshments. Um, so again, wishing everyone who's celebrating a birthday this week a very, very happy birthday. And as usual, we will sing them happy birthday. When you're ready, Maestro. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We welcome all those who have come back from vacation. And we pray for those who are going. Don't forget St. Stephen's. <laughs> and also a warm welcome to anyone who's visiting us today for the first time. We're happy to have you with us. Next week, please, John chapter 6. It will not be a regular sermon, but it will be a give and take. What is Christ to you in your life? Is he the bread of life? Is it the water that gives an everlasting life? Whatever it is to you. Your experiences with Christ. So please come with your experience. Don't be shy. Anglicans, we are shy to give testimony. Don't be shy. If only what you are saying is the truth, may the Lord bless you. Recession on him, rejoice the Lord is King. Jesus, the Savior, raised 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.